Do you remember what it was like to be 16 years old? Close your eyes and remember 16, a time of budding independence and wonder. At the ripe age of 16, you often find yourself on the cusp of adulthood, ever so eager to shed your childhood and step into a new light. Surely you remember it all. It's hard to forget. But do you also remember what a scary time it was for you too? Sure, you were no longer so plagued by the irrational thoughts and fears that you had as a kid. No monster in the closet, no aliens waiting to abduct you. And yet, something about that age always serves as a magnet for anxiety and existential dread for some reason. The kind that keeps you up at night, refusing to let you down from the high above place it dragged you up to. And despite all of that, you've made it onto the other side of adulthood. Childhood can be a lonely, terrifying place, especially for a child of 16. Annalisa Michel was a 16-year-old girl, young, bright, and sweet as can be. She would seemingly grow up to become a well-rounded and respectable woman as an adult. But unfortunately, something very dark would soon bubble to the surface, altering the course of her life permanently. The curious case of Annelise Michel is one that has been studied and picked apart time and time again, and for good reason, after all this, is the story of the girl who had 70 exorcisms performed on her. You might not be familiar with Annelise just yet, but if you're a horror fan of any capacity, then you more than likely already know the stories she inspired. Most famously, the 2005 film The Exorcism of Emily Rose was made with Annalisa's very experience in mind. Annalisa was born in 1952 to Anna and Joseph Michel in the small town of Klingenberg, Germany. Annalisa's parents were described as being strict and protective over Annalisa and her siblings, but it truly was a way of life that seemed to work for them. The Michel family came up in what at the time was considered to be an extremely traditional Catholic home. So traditional, in fact, that it was considered a long-standing family tradition to dedicate at least one child to an ecclesiastical career. Annalisa herself expressed that she had the desire to one day become a teacher of the principles of the Catholic religion. Around the time that Annalisa actually turned 16 was when things began taking a turn for the worst. One day in the September of 1968, Annalisa found herself feeling quite ill while at school, so much so that she actually lost consciousness. According to Annalisa, she awoke in her bed later that night sometime after midnight as she felt herself being pinned to the bed by a heavy force, afraid, helpless and paralyzed. Thankfully, the moment quickly passed and it was soon just a distant memory. Almost a year later, that distant memory unfortunately became less distant when she began suffering these blackout and paralysis episodes more and more frequently. The very next day, an understandably concerned Anna scheduled an appointment with the family physician who highly suggested they pay a visit to a neurologist by the name of Dr. Siegfried Lucy. On August 27th, Siegfried performed an EEG on the young Annalisa, which indicated that her brain activity was in fact quite normal. Dr. Siegfried ultimately concluded that she was probably experiencing cerebral seizures with mild symptoms of grand mal epilepsy. Do note that at this point, no anticonvulsant medication was prescribed as a treatment for said condition. Shortly after their visit with Dr. Siegfried, Annalisa fell into a severely sore throat, which in turn led to a tonsillectomy to be performed on her, and soon after her series of illnesses seems to have just snowballed, getting worse and worse until she was permanently bedridden. From the age of five years old, everyone knew that she was a rather delicate child, constantly in and out of medical care, and this time was no different, but these illnesses 
would mark the start of her descent into darkness. Finally, in June of 1970, Annalisa experienced her worst mental episode yet, to which she then visited a new neurologist by the name of Dr. Von Hallo. After yet another EEG, something highly irregular was discovered. Dr. Hallo prescribed anti-convulsant medication and was kept in a mental clinic for further observation. It was during her time while staying at the mental clinic that she claims to have started encountering unearthly beings, or Fratzen, as the German would say. Annalisa described to her doctor that she had begun witnessing the menacing demonic apparitions that would visit her for the rest of her life, which often caused her to feel a sense of despair and a demonic presence within her own self. Other interesting details that she reported include smelling foul smells, including burning fecal matter, strange voices and shrieks, which would often damn her to hell, and of course, a worsening of her seizures. It's important to note that at this point, not a single person believed that she was possessed, not even her parents, but that was to be expected given their religious beliefs at the time. When she was finally released from the institution, she would frequently report hearing a knocking sound every single night, which would come from her bedroom, as well as an increase in those horrifying hallucinations that she had experienced while being institutionalized. One evening, while the family was having dinner, Annalise's hands began to swell up to an inexplicable amount, to which she then cried out, I have black hands. My savior, forgive me as she saw the faces of demons, each one with seven crowns and seven horns. Understandably shaken up by what happened, her mother reached out to the local church, as well as one father, Ernest, who would be the one to communicate Annalisa's case with his superiors. Curiously, Father Ernest has stated that he approached this case with a healthy amount of skepticism since he didn't believe demonic possession was even possible on a baptized person. By the end of their communication, Father Ernest was 100% convinced that the poor Annalisa was under the influence of Satan himself. And this was the moment when the horror story that became Annalisa's life truly began. Whether Satan and his legions had truly taken a hold of her soul or not, you could never in a million years prepare for the hell on earth that was to come. Join us again as we unravel the story of Annalisa Michel, next time on Into the Rabbit Hole.